I am ready to uh, do it. And during the RGG, I ended up doing uh, pretty new things uh, that I have never tried before. So I'll just talk about like the major tasks that I felt as the outreach intern as throughout the whole intern process. So, so the three important things that I basically involved myself with improve the search functionality of the website using Algolia, completely new thing I had never tried before. And it was pretty uh, new stuff for me. Uh, and it was amazing to learn. Another stuff was implement uh, new f uh, designs and uh, that would like uh, improve the readability of the website and all. And uh, we had to take in care of all the users. So during the whole process, it was quite long sometimes for implementing a few designs uh, because I had to get both my mentors to agree with it. Uh, but yeah, it was really fun because I enjoy doing uh, designs and implementing them. That's like my favorite job along with backend. Uh, and the third thing that I also involved with myself was automating because uh, the Camel website worked on uh, the whole uh, foundation of the Antora and Hugo. So some things had to be automated so that it would easily generate uh, each and every documentation file. So I was also involved with that. So I learned maven and gulp also during that time and it was amazing again because completely new things that i learned during this whole three months and it was pretty fun uh as overall my uh whole experience was really great uh after my art feature got over i had like a number of uh calls and messages regarding it. So because I just posted it on LinkedIn, so everyone started messaging me regarding it. So I ended up writing, like during the entire outreach process, we had to like write a series of blogs. It was not a compulsion, but I completely enjoyed it. So I have written like, uh, this is the website. You can uh, view it if you want. So it includes all the uh, blogs related to outreach. -y. And um, like even the minute details also it includes. So if you want, you can do it. Other than that, I also conducted workshops, um, actually webinars in this case of uh, pandemic because I can't create like person workshop. So uh, the thing was after outreach, I was like chosen as the DSC lead for my campus and uh, I wanted to like change the view of my uh, campus students to uh, more of the open source world. And it was surprising because many of them were very interested in open source, uh, but didn't know how to get started. So uh, I also did a detailing uh, YouTube video, like an entire webinar, where I started off with uh, how to contribute in open source and what all can be done, and I also shared about outreach also. Most of the thing in that video has been advised by my mentors here. So thank, really thankful to them because I learned a lot uh, from them, and uh, it was an amazing experience as an overall thing. So yeah, thank you.
Awesome, Amy. Uh, yeah. Great to have you uh, delighted with the work you've done, and you should be pretty proud of the work you've accomplished. And uh, yeah, the website that you're seeing, um, the Camel Apache Org website, was largely done by our outreach and Google Summer of Code students. Amy is one of them. And uh, do you have any questions for Amy? Um, if not, we'll go to our next uh, Lightning Talk presenter, uh, which is a Google Summer of Code student, uh, two years uh, at, at Apache Camel project. And one of those first year, he worked on the website as well. So uh, Nainanga, uh, you can start at your leisure. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Zara. So, I'll share my screen. You can hear me, right? Please go ahead. Yeah, cool. Okay, hello, everyone. So, welcome to my lightning talk. My name is Nainak Mohandira. In this lightning talk, I will share my two years of experience doing Google Summer of Code with Apache Camel. First of all, let me briefly tell you about myself. As I told you earlier, my name is Nainak Mohandira. Currently, I'm a final year computer science undergraduate at University of Jaffna, Sri Lanka. I successfully completed Google Summer of Code 2019 and 2020 with Apache Camel. Most importantly, I am an open source enthusiast like you. Though ApacheCon is a famous event around the world, I believe there are many participants who may still not be aware of what is Google Summer of Code. So let me briefly explain what is Google Summer of Code is. Google Summer of Code, in short, GSOC, is a three-month coding program mainly focusing on bringing more student, students into open source software development. Students from various countries work with the world's top open source organizations and try to solve their issues or implement new ideas. Each selected student gets at least one mentor from his or her organization. Since, Google, since 2005, Google has funded this program. More than 70,000 students, 35,000 mentors have participated in this event. Together, they have contributed more than 38 million lines of code to the open source software, which is awesome. So, if you are willing to participate in GSOC 2021, how can you find Apache Camel projects to apply? It's very easy. As you can see in this slide, a simple query in Jira would do the trick. Jira is the Apache Camera Software Foundation, Apache Software Foundation's main issue tracking platform. You can find almost all the ASF projects issues in Jira. If you want to find issues related to Apache Camel to apply in GSOC, select Camel from the project tab in the top left corner and search for issues with label GSOC. You can find enough issues to contribute to. Just put a comment on it. Someone from the Camel community will surely assist you. Next, I will tell you how competitive the GSOC is. Here, what is, here is what I found. Nearly 52,000 students from 178 countries have registered to participate in GSOC this time. But only around 1,200 students have been accepted this time which means only 2% of students have been accepted by registered students. I was one of them. Okay, then what are the benefits of completing GSOC? That should be right. Otherwise, why this much competition? Yes, you are right. There are a number of benefits if you are able to complete GSOC successfully. First, you can earn up to 6,000 USD based on your location. In my case, I got 3,000 US dollars, which is pretty much enough for me to spend throughout my final year at university. Second, in your resume, will be highlighted 
among students who didn't do GSOC. You can have a good internship in leading companies like WSO2. I got a really good internship at WSO2 because of doing GSOC back in 2019. And the learning experience, which is the best thing I got by doing GSOC. You can learn best practices, new technologies, and open source contributing directly from industry experts. There are many more items. There are many more items in this list. Just Google it. You can find many articles related to the benefits of doing this. Okay. Now you may wonder. What did I contribute to Apache Camel in both 2019 and 2020? A few. If you go to Apache Camel website now, the current website was launched back in 29, GSOC 2019 period. I helped to fix several types of errors in this website and I did some search engine optimization, in short, SEO, to the website. Moreover, I was able to implement the basic search functionality of the website which is now more advanced by other contributors. In GSOC 2020, I implemented a Camel MinIO component. Camel has more than 350 active components. MinIO is one of them. MinIO is the world's fastest object storage server. Now you can integrate MinIO service if you are using Apache Camel. This year, I contributed more than 11,000 lines of code to the Apache Camel, including generating Camel MinIO Caraf connector, Camel Minio example project and Camel Minio component documentation. This journey would be never possible without the help of my mentors. Mr. Savannah Rigbald from Red Hat, he is living in Germany. Mr. Andre Andrea Constantin from Red Hat, he is living in Italy. And Ms. Dennis Stormin, who is a software engineer from Russia. They helped me a lot to complete GSOC in both times. I'm very much thankful for them for their guidance. Okay, that's bring me to the end of this lighting talk. This is my very first lighting talk at a conference. I hope you enjoyed it. These are few links where I found relevant information. I encourage you to take a look. For those who are currently doing their bachelor's, master's or PhDs, I encourage you to apply GSOC 2021 with Apache Camel. Give it a try. Thank you. Awesome, Nainanga. Thank you for uh, giving the talk and thank you for all the contributions you've done over the two years uh, to Apache Camo. Hope to see a lot more of them when you have the time to continue. Um, moving right along, I'm going to add to the session our uh, next speaker, Abdel Ghani. Hey. Hey. Hi. So, I haven't seen any questions. Sorry, I removed uh, Nainanga, but I think you can uh, start at your leisure. Thank you. So I'm not sure if I have shared my screen with you. I'm actually using the platform the very first time. So there, there are some browser issues, so you might need some, you know, pop-ups that need permissions and things like that. So. so how Oh yeah, okay, perfect. Now I, I found it, thank you. Yep, I'm seeing your screen. Thank you very much. So um, actually I have joined this uh, session because I want to share one uh, experience uh, I had in the past and just talk a bit about uh, how we did solve one of the issues. Uh, you are all familiar with integration and you know, when you build your flows in an integration platform, Camel, you deploy your flows to the platform, suddenly everything becomes more or less a black box unless you build this sort of a framework yourself. You log some data to log files or to an external data store like a database and you browse through it to understand what went through your platform. And actually, I have uh, had a discussion with one of uh, our customers here in Germany uh, nine years ago, uh, and he was actually very frustrated with uh, monitoring his platform 
and getting insights because they had a very large installation, distributed environment, many flows, processing a lot of data, a lot of business data, things like orders, invoices, and so on and so forth. And uh, so at that time we said, uh, in, in operations, we can do something about it. We really need to, uh, to get out of this darkness and uh, give our customer a bit more visibility into what's going on in the platform. So and, uh, that was the birth actually of a, of a solution called NGEMS uh, that we have built and that NGEMS has been deployed across the years to monitor different integration platforms and uh, around uh, 2019, we have decided to build an NGEMS solution also for Camel to make sure whenever you deploy your, your platform, you, you build your, your flows and you deploy them, that you have visibility into what's going on inside the platform. Uh, NGEMS stands for not just another monitoring solution. And the reason for that is because NGEMS collects all the data and flows running through the platform. Actually, it monitors the, the flows natively as well as the data executed along these flows. It automatically identifies issues and it can generate alerts for any issues that happen in the platform. And it does all of this without requiring you to do any changes to your code. So it's actually a platform that uh, does the monitoring by auto discovery. So on the right side, you see uh, a flow. This is a diagram generated by NGEMS automatically out of a flow definition. And this is done by NGEMS without requiring you to change anything in the code. Actually, NGEMS doesn't know about the implementation of the flows and their configurations. It just runs on top of the platform and it auto discover the activities, uh, the routers, uh, actually the complete flow end to end. While the flows are executed, uh, uh, when, when messages are hitting the platform via channels, NGEMS will collect the data and will show how the flow has been executed uh, along the, the flow, we will see every activity has been executed and some metrics around that activity. If any error occurs, NGEMS will capture that error in the flow automatically and will provide it to the user in the user front end. When you run flows, typically you have multiple flows running in your platform to achieve certain goals. So these flows will work more or less on the same messages and NGEMS will correlate the execution of those messages across different flows and will present the correlation chain to the user for the user to be able to understand exactly where we started processing data and if there are any issues where the, uh, those issues have happened. So in the next slide, we will see a screenshot from the graphical user interface. Uh, on the left side, we show uh, the, the domains uh, of Camel that we monitor. You can have multiple domains, things like uh, this is a development environment, this is a test environment, or a production environment. And automatically, NGEMS will show all the flows deployed to those environments. And NGEMS will also apply access control to this. So different users may see different flows in the platform. Once you click on any of those flows, NGEMS will execute a search and will show you all the executions that happened in your platform. And if you click on one of them, you get, you get an exact description of what happened inside Camel with regards to that specific message. So you can imagine every entry in this list corresponds to the processing of, for example, an order. If there are any errors, NGEMS will highlight those errors with this icon. If the flows run properly, they will be marked with the status success, which is green. In addition, we have a search bar where you can search on any flow based on the data processed by that flow. 
uh, data could be, for example, an order ID or a customer name or an address or a supplier. Uh, any value that you have, you could put in here in this search bar and NGEMS will show you a list of all messages that are executed in the platform for that specific ID. So in addition to this, uh, with NGEMS, we can see the uh, execution time of the flow. So every flow, how, how long it took to execute. We can see the execution time of every single activity. By clicking on this icon, we could see that. We get a lot of statistics calculated for the platform for every single flow definition, as well as for every activity inside the flow. So NGEMS goes beyond this and it provides uh, reports. So we can create reports for any uh, flow definition. We can also configure alerting rules. Alerting rules can be based on the status of flows, can be based on the data inside the flows. Uh, they can also be based on uh, statistics. And finally, we have another component embedded in NGEMS called Argos. So with Argos, we can monitor the infrastructure, which is uh, running Camel. And uh, with this, we actually want to bridge the gap between monitoring the flows. And if a flow, for example, is taking too long, we would like to determine if there are any issues in the underlying infrastructure and then correlate the two events. Slowness of a process correlates with uh, the CPU is overloaded, for example. So as I mentioned, uh, with NGEMS, we can capture uh, all the payloads. So this is really where we give 100% visibility into everything going on in the platform. So we capture the uh, message that has been sent uh, via the channel, no matter which format that is. It could be a message in XML or GMS, uh, sorry, or uh, JSON message or CSV, whatever is there. NGEMS is generic and it would show you exactly the payload as it's been used by Camel. And you could also enable tracing along the flow and see exactly how the message has been transformed, routed across or along the, the chain of, of the flow. So in a nutshell, uh, with NGEMS in place, you have now the possibility to monitor a layer which has never been monitored in Camel, mainly the flow layer as well as the data layer. Uh, and the NGEMS actually provides this feature out of the box without requiring a user to do any development or any enhancements to the platform to gain this visibility. How it works? Uh, NGEMS consists of two components. One is a server component and one is uh, what we call the NGEMS client. The NGEMS client is nothing but a jar file, a jar file that you will deploy to your platform along with, uh, with the configuration file. And that configuration file will tell the NGEMS client where to send monitoring data to. And obviously it will send it via uh, ActiveMQ or, or any GMS message, uh, messaging server of your choice to the NGEM server, the NGEM server will display the data, will execute the alerts, and so on and so forth. If you are interested to see NGEMS, you can get in touch with my colleague, uh, Birgit Jordan, uh, at integrationmatters.com. Uh, she can help you to get uh, a demo, an evaluation. We can ask your questions. Uh, sorry, we can answer your questions. And uh, uh, I would like to take the opportunity now and thank our partner, Bintegra from Slovenia, who did uh, build the NGEMS client for this, uh, for this platform to extend the monitoring capabilities to Camel for Camel user also to benefit from these features. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much for giving this lightning talk. Are there any questions? Type them in the, the chat if you have any questions. I'm sure Abdul Ghani will be on uh, Slack and other you know chats if you have any further questions for him, and Thank he you. can paste further links to this um, you know uh, offering 
in the chat here so you can follow up on that. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, our next speaker would be Klaus, but I don't actually see him here. So we'll jump to Aurelian and then we'll get to Klaus when he shows up. So Aurelian, I'm adding you right now. Hello. Hey. So please start at your leisure. Yes. Okay. So hello everybody. Um, so I will talk uh, about uh, the tooling for uh, Camel K. So if you followed the, the conference the last two days, you heard a, a lot about uh, Camel K. And uh, well, there is uh, some tooling um, in VS Code and in Eclipse. And well, I, I will show it in VS Code. It's quite similar in uh, Eclipse. So let's go to do a little tour. So in VS Code, uh, if you want to have access to uh, this tooling, you can type camel in, uh, in the marketplace and you will find uh, the extension pack. Uh, I recommend to install the extension pack. It will come with uh, a bunch of stuff, including the specific uh, camel K tooling, which is here. Okay, so for me, I have already installed it. So to get started, uh, there is uh, a tutorial if you want, so you can click on it and uh, it will uh, guide you to create your first integration and so on, uh, checking uh, the requirements on, on your machine uh, and so on. Uh, I won't use it for today. We'll go a bit uh, further than what is in this tutorial, but if you want to get started yourself, uh, it can be useful for you. Okay, so uh, how to get started? I will uh, use uh, the command palette. Um, so for people that are not familiar with uh, v Visual Studio Code, every, uh, I mean, not everything, but uh, most of the thing are going through the, the command palette. So you can call it with Control Shift P. And uh, so, yeah, if you are type typing the integration, you will have uh, some common and there is uh, notably the way to create uh, an Apache Camel K integration file. You can choose um, the language that you want. Uh, then uh, choose in which fo folder you want it. You give a little name. And here you are, you have um, I will remove a bit of uh, code, boilerplate code. Uh, here you you, uh, you have your first camel root uh, that is uh, available, a classic uh, uh, example. And uh, right uh, from here, uh, you can start, uh, you can start the disintegration. Uh, so to deploy it, so for instance, uh, I'm launching it with a start Apache Camel um, integration from the right click. And so uh, I can see that uh, it is started and uh, that it is running. So that's uh, one thing uh, that is quite cool. Uh, really, uh, it is integrated to deploy uh, immediately. You can notice, uh, I will. Yeah, you can uh, undeploy, remove. Uh, you can see uh, what is happening. You can follow the log uh, on the pod. So in fact, I, I have it directly available in my output because I'm in dev mode. But if I have several um, several integration, it's useful to to have access directly to it. In case. Uh, the integration is not starting and so on. You also have access to some uh, specific camel K operator log. So you can have more details on uh, what is going on. Useful for debugging. But uh, yeah, let's go back to my route. So uh, I created it. Uh, I see that I can deploy it. Now uh, I want to develop uh, my route and change uh, stuff in it. Uh, what is cool is that I have uh, the camel, uh, the camel, the Java uh, 
completion, uh, which is uh, available. So that's uh, quite useful. <laughs> um, and uh, it, so I have it without uh, configuring anything. Uh, you can see it is not a Java project and so on. So it's really just uh, the, the extension which is configuring it for you. You have also, uh, like for any other language, uh, the completion for the camel URI, the over, and so on. So here I can see I have some completion for my uh, parts. Something um, interesting. So I started in dev mode, so it is uh, working fine. I mean, if I uh, change here uh, the text, that I save it, it is automatically uh, restarted the route. So you can have uh, relatively fast feedback uh, on it. You also have a lot of things um, in the Camel K mod line. So for instance, uh, you have the completion for some property files that you want to use. Uh, so here I will just show my, my property files. So I just have uh, to change my, my greetings. And if I want to use it, I can uh, put it here. I save, it will reload automatically. And I put something wrong. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I think I know. Uh, I think the camel, the mod line is not uh, taken into account uh, automatically, but it's the opportunity, opportunity to show that there is uh, directly the command uh, also in the palette uh, to start uh, start my program. So uh, I don't need to go to the right click. Uh, so it is picking what, what is selected. And uh, it will start my uh, my route. So here in the camel K uh, mod line, you can put everything that uh, you will want uh, uh, really uh, at the runtime in production and so on. But uh, it can be uh, useful uh, that uh, to override some of the, of the properties without changing the file. So for that, uh, you can use uh, what is called VS Code tasks. And uh, you can define uh, some properties. Uh, to, so all the camel, not all, but most of the camel K mod lines that are available are also available here. Um, so for instance, the traits uh, or a bunch of others. So here I choose to use the pro properties to override my greetings. Uh, so it will be, it will override it really locally to my uh, development environment. And I am keeping my, uh, the code that I will use in production intact. And uh, yeah, so I'm saving it. I need to launch in a different way this time. So I'm come back to, uh, my route, and if I again try to start my Apache Camel integration, uh, there is use a predefined task, and so I can uh, select my task, uh, which is providing special greetings, uh, which is local to my uh, to my context. Um, yeah. Should start somewhere. <laughs> what I have done. Start. Ask. Okay. 
Okay, um, okay. So it is working now. <laughs> uh, I can see that uh, I have my uh, other uh, property which is taken in account. Okay, and yeah, last little thing is that uh, there is an, uh, an overview uh, of the route which is available uh, in the outline here. And so you can also navigate uh, in the, uh, with the, in the route using that. So it's, it's called search symbol. Uh, you can call it with Control Shift O. Okay, so yeah, um, it's quite useful. Uh, maybe just show some settings that you can use. Uh, so there is, by default, you can automatically upgrade uh, the version uh, and you can uh, specify a specific uh, version of uh, the camel uh, utility. Um, so it can be useful um, in a, if you want to use yeah, uh, a specific version or productized version or uh, something that is not released yet, for instance. And also you can uh, yeah, specify uh, the namespace um, to, to deploy in a specific namespace, namespace your KMLK integration. So yeah, a lot of things that uh, really help to get started uh, and have a, a fast run, run trip uh, of development, uh, a fast inner loop uh, directly inside uh, your uh, ID. If you have any questions, that's the time. So any questions for Erlin? Okay, so Erlin, you can paste in, you know, links to for folk to follow up on this and, you know, any other information uh, in the chat so people can follow that up. Uh, Klaus, uh, can you share your screen now? Thanks, Erlin. Hey. Hi, Klaus. So, whenever you're ready. Yeah, okay. Um... Okay, I have to share the screen, so I have to find the screen, the right one, so you guys see yourself. Okay, so so I just wanted to talk a little bit about a very early prototype of some tooling for Camel that I hacked together in a few hours late uh, late uh, in the evening. Uh, it was based, inspired a bit by Aurelian uh, mentioning that we didn't have a good tool to visualize camera routes uh, during development. And I thought of, okay, we might have something we could reuse from. If we have a tool in Apache Camel that can output a report on your unit test, like a route current. So you can say for these routes, have they been covered by a test and you get a, like a number of how many times a message has been passed to part of that route. So I was reusing that one. So it's a poor man's uh, route uh, visual, visual tool. And I actually hope that, you know, really and, and, and these guys will take uh, take that and, and make a proper tool of it in the editors. So just to get started with the tool, it's on uh, GitHub here on, on, uh, on, on Camel Visual. So I'm using an awesome t uh, framework called JBank to uh, run the tool. So it's a way of running Java code easily from the command line. It's called JBank. Um, you can find it. It has a proper website and it's also on GitHub and open source and you know has a community and created by actually a colleague of ours, Max Anderson. Um, really awesome. You can try it actually on the website. Anyway, this is a, a quick way to run the tool and he actually improved it um, at max so I got a way to to run it faster so anybody you can run this tool just by installing jbang so from your command shell you can type jbang and then launch at this is a 
GitHub. Uh, so it's Dow's Cloud, that's my uh, uh, username on GitHub, and then the repository name. Um, so I'm actually in the Camel example main. This is a uh, source code from uh, examples in the Camel. And uh, if I run this one, uh, you can see that it had detected there's a route, my route builder. And there's a route here uh, from a bean and lock and a bean and lock and with the line number here. So just to demonstrate that it's, uh, it's working, so I can say two. It doesn't matter so if it doesn't, it's not correct, right? So I add like a number of X to two here. So let's run the tool again. Oh, I need to save the file. And you can see that now there are like additional twos and the numbers match up. So what you can do is actually just run this command in watch mode. So it will be just keep on running every two seconds. It will update itself. So you can just set and, and, and do some code, uh, split on the body, uh, and then see what happens. Now you can see the splitter is actually detected. OK, this is this from the split, right? And you know, oh, I need to do an end here because that was wrong, because I need to log at the end. And you can see how it defaults, right? So now this is a very poor man. You have to switch between the, the tools, right? But if this is just a way you can actually cheat a bit. So if you have a, any Java editor, you can run it with a terminal, you know? So you can just keep running the same command there. Let's see if it actually works. No. Oops, the terminal has died. So just run a new terminal. So I can actually just keep running it in from here. Now I have a poor man's editor uh, inside the my editor here. I just delete those. And there's another route here. I'm adding a second route. And then, you know, the tool should be able to pick it up. There are like two now. You can see one route here and the second route here. Um, so. That's that. That was just a quick demo of this uh, hacky tool. Uh, it's by no means uh, ready for production or whatnot. It's just uh, proving the concept. You know, Aurelian and those guys in the fuse, uh, camel tooling team is running with this to make a proper nice uh, output of it. Um, I guess that's it. Uh, again, also, I really recommend JBank. This is a really nice way of um, framework. So what JBank is able to do is also uh, it can actually compile the source code on the fly. So actually what it does when I run this one from the command tool, uh, JBank, it goes to GitHub, gets that file, the source code, and there's a metric file here, JBank catalogs. So this is where you can see there's an alias for the launch command. So it actually knows this is script for Visual route main. So this is the source code file that is loading. So if we go and look at that one, this is the hacky code. So it's just a public static void main and some looking for some files. Um, you know, all of these files, it uses a parser, the Java parser figures out if it's a Java class, and then it uses some tools from Camel that can pass the Java class whether or not there's any routes. And then you go to nodes, and you can just print them out um, a bit, bit ugly. But that's it. Really awesome. So if this source code file is changed, you know, when you run Jack JBank the next time, it will actually be updated. So pretty cool. Um, okay, I will stop sharing, and we can move on. Awesome, Klaus. I think uh, one of the cool points about this is that this is a single Java file, but relying on a bunch of stuff that is already built into Camel. So you can look at that and build tools like this using the API that's provided in Camel. Uh, yes, we absolutely, do, yeah. Yeah, we have one question from Peter. Uh, is there a way to do single transaction traceability across routes? So tracing single transaction across different routes. Oh, that, that's not related to my session, right? So it was a... It's an off-topic question. Um, single transaction, yes. So, well, 
depends. So a transaction, what is a transaction? Are you talking about a classical transaction using resources like JMS or JWC in a two-phase commit? Um, then there's transaction boundaries can surely across different routes across. So you can have link multiple routes together using direct, for example, and that, that will also be combined in a single transaction. So yes, that's possible. It's just use direct endpoints between your routes. Yeah, I think uh, there are a number of traceability options in, in Camel, like, you know, doing Jaeger or Zipkin or stuff like that. So, you know, you have a transaction identifier that correlates all these transactions and that's collected in another tool. Camel exposes all of that to Camel. I think that will help along. Yeah. Yeah. Also that, yeah, the saga pattern and you have, you know, breadcrumbs, and, mm -hmm. as you said, those those tools that can like correlate and visualize it for you. Especially if you go across different nodes, for example, not just inside a single CAM application. Yeah, so we're getting a bit off topic. Thank you, Klaus, for this presentation. You can paste uh, the repository and things like that in the chat so people can follow up. Next up, okay. uh, I'm going to remove Klaus from this. Next up is Kurt. Hey, hey. so you can start at your leisure. Thank you. Excellent. Um, you've seen a lot of uh, demos with text editors and stuff like that. I work on the synthesis project where we have uh, taken a little different approach to Camel, uh, where we actually deploy um, a graphical user interface into the into the cloud, and it becomes an uh, an integration platform as a service. It's still based on Camel, but uh, I'll, I'll show you the, the console right now. Let me uh, share my screen. There we go. I'll show you the console right here. So this is this is running on OpenShift, and you can see I have three integrations running here. Uh, and, uh, the first page is the dashboard. You have some kind of overview as to you know how many mess how many messages flow through the system, how long the system's been up. Uh, you can you can change the integrations. You can create one. You can edit one. Uh, for those people who are really familiar with Camel, I'd like to show you all the how all the Camel components basically show up as connectors. So these are all the connectors that we currently have in this in the system uh, that can be readily used by the people to build flows. So there's a lot of them and um, you can make custom connectors as well. So uh, there's a very low code uh, platform. And basically what I would like you to sh show is a video of how uh, you would use um, you know, what that look, looks like. So I'm going to start start the video at this point. Make sure it's full screen, and enjoy the show. So we're opening a uh, Swagger definition here.
Okay, can you can you hear me at this point? Okay. I hope you can still if you hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good. So uh, we are using uh, Atlas Mapper to uh, to map input to output because it knows what the data shape on both sides, and so you just have to connect the fields on both sides. Implement it, and now we're going to implement a, a, a get. So so again, we're using the database. Uh, we're going to for the get, we're going to select something uh, by IED. We're going to also raise an error if the record's not found. We'll get back to that in just a minute. So now again, it has a little warning sign so we can add the data mapper and we can uh, map the ID of the output to the I input to the ID of the output. And again, we're mapping that to the uh, output of the uh, of the a of the of the REST API. So that is the we can st we can uh, map some errors as well. So the different errors that are, can can occur, you can uh, uh, return an error body, and you can use different types of error codes so you can handle errors back uh, from where you're calling it from. Now we're implementing the put. Again, we're going to just update something in the database. Uh, map input to output. Again, it knows what goes in and what goes out. So we just connect which parameters we're interested in. Should be done with that. Mapping it to uh, the rest output that it knows from the schema. So the output's now mapped. Uh, we can, again, map the errors. It knows which errors occur in that flow, which can happen, so we can map that. And finally, uh, the delete action. So we'll de delete something from the database here. It doesn't have to be a database. It can be anything. Uh, we just uh, shown uh, choose to, to demo that here because it's um, easy. It's a local resource. All right, I think uh, this is the last flow that we're going to implement. So we can publish it out, which means that uh, we're going to build a container real, to real time. It takes about a minute or so to build this container. So in the video, I've sped it up a little bit uh, so we don't have to wait a full minute. Once it's live, the uh, the integration shows the endpoint, so you you can copy the endpoint, and uh, you can either put it in your in your browser. We're going to put it here. Um, put it in the. Uh, Put it in the terminal, and we're going to execute some uh, curl commands against it. Which means that we're going to we're going to do some post requests to uh, to put some data in. We're going to put an, a number of three three number of tasks in, and then we're going to execute a uh, get get all the all the all the tasks. It doesn't look very good in curl, but if you uh, put that into a browser, it's formatted a little bit nicer. So let's put it in the browser. And you'll see that you see the, the three entries that we just put into the database. Now we can get by ID as well. We can get an ID of one. And we should only get one record back. There it is. Uh, we can try also uh, loading a non existing um, record and it shows the error, like a 404. So you can handle that in your code. And then we can have some other errors as well. Like, you know, if you request uh, 
the row of uh, the letter E, obviously that's that's not an integer. So you get a server error at that point. Okay, and that completes the, the demo. So if there's any questions, I can answer those, those. I don't see any questions, but I guess we lost the audio there for a bit. But um, the point here is that you basically clicked through and implemented an API without programming, really. You know, it's a low code uh, environment uh, that, you know, folk that don't know how to perhaps develop in Camel can use to implement APIs, but other things, other types of integrations as well. And you're kind of showing here what types of uh, connectors, camel components are uh, available. Cool. So in that demo, Thank you it. saw a tool for mapping. And Tomo is going to talk a bit about that uh, tool. So Tomo, I just added you to the session. Hey, Tomo. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so. Start at your leisure. Okay. So sharing my screen. And so here is a data map of UI. Uh, can you guys see the, my screen now? It's not shown yet. So let's give it a second, perhaps. Okay. Check for any browser prompts, permissions, things like that. Oh, there. Still not showing up, but I'll tell you when it shows up, at least on my end. Okay. So it should yep. show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's here now. Okay. So this is the uh, Atlas Map standalone you. I'd like to make a brief introduction of the Atlas Map data mapper. Um, Atlas Map is a data mapping tool with uh, the graphical web interface, uh, just this one uh, for creating mapping. And at runtime, we have Camel Atlas Map component to run as a part of Apache Camel World. So in the beginning, Atlas Map was developed to be embedded into Synthesis just uh, uh, in the previous session by Kurt, uh, showed a, a tiny mapping tool inside the synthesis. And so while synthesis remains as a primary target platform for Atlas Map, we also have been exploring standalone use cases as well. So such as importing XML or JSON schema directly into the UI and create mappings between them and put it into their own camera world. Although it requires a bit of extra gluing compared to using synthesis, uh, it's already available today and we continue to explore improving the user experience on it. And we also have a VS Code plugin to spin up Alpha Smart Data Mapping user interface, this one within the VS Code. So uh, I will demo, have a quick demo for it. So. I have three schemas here. Uh, so we can see a contents here. So three schemas, one context schema that is a XSD, XML schema, and the other is the older schema that is JSON schema. And the other, uh, the last one is the outcome. And I'm going to import those into the uh, data mapper. So first, to source document, import contact XML schema, and then you see what is in this contact XML uh, document structure uh, in, in the shape of the tree, field tree. And also order, import order, and then the last one. Okay, so here we see source and target in here. The source is to uh, read from. So we want to read some data from source documents and then put them into a tar target document. So we want to map them in the UI. 
So I'm going to just drag and drop the name into it and add another field here. Okay, so this means that I want to concatenate first name and last name and create a name on the target side. And I want to add transformation capitalized for each field. Okay, so I want to see quickly see how it's going to work. So this is a preview mode. So you can try uh, inputting uh, source data here, directly here, and see a result. So let's see. So you see, this is the result of the mapping. Um, OK, so this is too e easy mapping, but I'm going to export it anyway. So it has the option of export the current mappings into ADM file. This is actually a zip file, but it contains uh, the files that is required to run Atlas map data mapping uh, in the camel world. So this ADM file uh, could be consumed by the camel world, as I said. Uh, so let's say I have an application.java that is a, actually a camel world and see this one. So it's sending to the Atlas map endpoint, specifying the ADM file path. So that's it to uh, put the data mapper into the camel world. So Okay, um, yeah, uh, that's it for me. Awesome. Thank you, Tomo. Are there any questions for Tomo at this time? Well, Tomo, you can paste in the links into the chat so people can follow up on their own as well. Uh, next up is Jose. Jose, I'm going to add you to the session and remove Tomo. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? So start at your leisure, please. Can you hear me? I lost all sound. It works perfectly. I can see your slides and I can hear you. Okay, perfect. So my talk is coming from outsider. Um, well, I will let the, the talk speak by itself. So I want to share a story about, whoops. Huh? All right, how I met. So I have no idea about this. And um, starting from the story, my name is Hoshi. I'm a software engineer working at Rebi Media right now. I I have been working in a lot of things like systems engineering, uh, web engineering, integration and stuff. And well, eight months ago, I met uh, old Camel. Maya gave us a session of more programming to show us how what is Camel, uh, how easy it is to use and doing some samples with everyone. And I was stomped like, wow, I haven't heard about this in all my life. Like, I was, I was not thinking about why I can use this because I immediately saw the, the usefulness. But I was rather thinking about why is it not more now? I haven't heard about that in ever. After I started digging a little more, I saw that it was quite quite well now. It just wasn't as down as my bubble, but still, I think that advocacy is my first point. Like, thanks to my advocacy, and now I'm trying to do it, try to share around what you know so more people hear about it. And that definitely increases the adoption without, you know, having any thinking bells about the technology, you won't ever know that it exists. So, please share around whatever 
whatever you know or whatever you are passionate about. So, well, I like it. So, the the next episode, I try to, you know, do a little demo, uh, do some integration with some public REST APIs, and I ran into issues, of course. Mm, thankfully, uh, Apache docu uh, Camel documentation is really good. Uh, it helped me a lot. Uh, I could even do a demo for a friend about, you know, uh, some video games, data chain and stuff. Even though I was only able to run that on my computer. And after I started trying to think about how to put that on a system, I didn't have much luck, maybe because I'm an experienced or I just didn't think it so well. And Google didn't help me. Like, okay, there is a lot of useful articles, but they are too specific for technology. And for me, I wanted to create a mental map of what I have, uh, why or how should I do, not what to do in whatever platform, because I wanted to get the skill, not rather have something, have something working. But definitely, I still like it a lot, the documentation, and I have uh, used it as a basis for how documentation in any system should be presented. And I think it's important for adoption as well. If you have good documentation and there is a lot of knowledge base in Stack Overflow, having uh, people helping you in Twitter and whatever, it always helps because you will feel like you are at home and you won't feel helpless, which is the worst feeling in the world. But I also think that it's important to focus on the why and the how instead of the what. I think that Apache Camel documentation is good at doing that. Not like there are other technologies that focus more on tutorials and stuff, which are also useful, but I don't know, maybe it depends on the person. So yeah, I saw that I had a gasp on how to use Apache Camel. Uh, well, like I said, my company, well, I didn't say it, my company, works in subtitling and other helpful features for media broadcasts. And we are always doing integrations between different TV channels and stuff. And well, there are a lot of a lot of problems. So obviously I suggested Camel. Like I thought that it was gonna fix a lot of our issues. We were doing like handmade serverless uh, nodes in AWS and Sometimes we run into errors because, well, uh, we can't count on everything. Yet, it's good, but actually no. My my boss and my and my teammates weren't uh, didn't buy it. They felt like, well, they didn't see how to put it in a serverless environment. They didn't know how to use Java because most of them use Python and and other languages like TypeScript. And there is a lot of cool tech out there to, you know, to get out and not everyone can know about everything. But actually, I think that Camel K and other, other news that we have been doing, we have been seeing this Apache Con, I go in the good direction because I'm sure that with Camel K, my team will have fit right at home, just uh, deploying the applications as serverless nodes and being able to use other languages as well. So I think that's also something good that Apache Camel has been doing and I, I appreciate like they right the way they are, they try to bring value and try to focus on good native applications and how they are being used as a compatibility and other trends. So in my way to here, in these eight months, I, in seeing uh, the path of Camel, I have seen some of the keys of adoption, like advocacy, knowledge, and reading the wave. And I think that Camel is really doing a really good job at those. Not only that, I think that it's not only good for open source, but for any project, because these three things brings more adoption. They, they bring more users and more maintainers, and more users and more maintainers will also bring more advocacy, more knowledge, 
you get the the idea. I think that it was not only useful to learn Camel, but I thought that I also learned a lesson about knowledge and for sharing and a lesson about life. And that's all. Thank you. If you have any question, I will be glad to. So any questions for Jose? I don't see any questions. Thank you so much, Jose, for giving this talk. It's awesome that you're um, a camel rider, and I hope that camel suits you well in the future. Thank you. OK, so those were the lightning talks. Um, next up, a bit later, is the birds of a feather. So stick around if you'd like for uh, that, and um, hope to see you uh, there. Thanks for attending. Uh, thanks for to all the uh, speakers that have given the lightning talks here, to all the speakers that have given talks toward the conference on this track. But we'll get to that a bit more, I guess, in the Birds of a Feather. So thank you. Have a great rest of the day.